There is a process that one must follow when it comes to the interpretation of prophecies. One must look at what is written, analyze relevant data that may support its claims, and then finally make conclusions based on the compiled evidence in faith. While the study of prophecies opens up many controversial discussions, one of the most provocative claims that can be made is that the Catholic Church, or specifically, in this case, the Vatican, is the whore of Babylon, referred to in Revelation 17 to 18. Here, we will be discussing information that reveals that the religious capital for the Roman Catholic faith is not of God, but is actually controlled and orchestrated by Satan himself as the final prophesied world system. While acknowledging that the book of Revelation is a sealed book with many mysteries yet to be revealed, we can have faith that the system prophesied in these chapters can be discerned today. As verse 8 of chapter 17 details, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. This will be divided into seven parts, which can easily be expanded on in future segments. With that being stated, it is now time to look at seven distinct points that exposes the whore of Babylon for who she really is. Let us begin. The first verse that we will look to is actually the last verse of the 17th chapter, where it specifically says, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Verse 10 of chapter 18 also describes this as a city. This is not a country, so you can take Stephen Anderson's interpretation of Mystery Babylon being America and throw it in the trash. This city has a profound influence on the whole world. As verse 15 reads, and he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. This allows the interpretation that the Vatican is that city, with close to 1.4 billion Catholics around the world submitting to its authority. In Revelation 17 verse 2, it reads, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. As we can see throughout history, the papacy has had a profound influence over the kings of the earth. Part of the reasons why so many settlers and Puritans came to America in the first place was to flee the Catholic monarchies of Europe. The sway of the Vatican and the Pope is undeniable, with numerous world leaders and celebrities personally visiting the city to see the Pope to this day. The prophecy concerning the Whore of Babylon is so specific that it even provides the geographic location of where the city is to be located. The Seven Mountains, otherwise known as the Seven Hills of Rome, are Aventine, Capitoline, Palatine, Cilian, Esquiline, Viminal, and Coronal. The Servian Wall, constructed in the 3rd century AD, creates the barrier around these seven mountains, where the Lateran Palace, located on the Cilian Hill, is the primary papal residence and is still considered the ecclesiastical seat for the Bishop of Rome. The Ten Kings, 
which are the ten horns of this beast, have not shown up yet. However, this doesn't mean we can't know what nations these leaders will come from. Currently, the group of ten, which, according to Wikipedia, is a group of countries that have agreed to participate in the General Agreement to Borrow, an agreement to provide the International Monetary Fund, which includes Belgium, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the Netherlands, Sweden, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, and the United States. This is an act of global force consisting of 10 countries that could fit this interpretation quite nicely, considering the positive relations they all have with the city in question. It might be argued that the rulers are supposed to be kings, and most of these governments do not have an active monarchy. However, verse 12 says they receive power as kings one hour with the beast. This can easily be interpreted as meaning that while they have power like kings, they themselves are not. If we even look at the latest G7 meeting, Pope Francis gave himself the prominent role of addressing these world leaders. Why would he be invited to something like this if the Vatican is not a part of the G7? Unless, of course, the Pope invited himself. This should help demonstrate the papacy's current political clout and how the world's nations will be reigning with the beast. If the city is to be arrayed with purple and scarlet, what would that look like? Well, considering that it is talking about clothing, it might be a logical conclusion to believe that many of those within the city wear purple and scarlet. When we look to the colors that bishops and cardinals wear, the immediate pattern can be recognized. They are all wearing purple and scarlet. The Cup of Abominations could be nothing other than the Catholic Mass, as it is taught that Jesus' literal body and blood is manifested for the congregation to eat. This is also seen as Christ repeatedly sacrificing himself every time the Mass is performed. This doesn't only negate the multiple verses that completely condemn cannibalization, but is against verses like Hebrews 7 verse 27, where it reads about Jesus, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did once, when he offered up himself showing how Christ's sacrifice was a once and for all act that was not to be repeated. Verses 11 to 12 of chapter 18 shows the excess of valuables that is contained within this city, and the fulfillment of this meets up to expectations. The wealth of the Vatican is exorbitant to say the least, and as looking at places such as St. Peter's Basilica, there is no doubt that the accumulated wealth of the Vatican is far beyond even the most liberal estimates. It is in no small part thanks to the Catholic Church's uncontrollable greed that the Protestant Reformation took place in the first place because of the sale of indulgences to remove souls from purgatory faster, which is a made up place that has no basis in the scriptures. Finally, in chapter 18 verses 21 to 22, we see that so many types of talented artists will no longer be found in the city. So go figure, there is no other organization that has been a greater patron of the arts than the Vatican. 
It almost doesn't need to be mentioned the famous pieces that are hosted here. Whether it is works from Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Donatello, or Raphael, nobody has artists quite like the Vatican. Which is ironic when considering what Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18, saying, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. It's interesting that the Bible refers to this as a woman, and yet the self-professed title of the Catholic Church is the Holy Mother Church. The fact that this city is called Mystery Babylon should indicate that its religious inspiration goes back to Babylon. We can see in sources such as Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop that mother and son worship originated in Babylon with Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. But we don't need to turn to this source to find satisfactory evidence that the Roman Catholic system has its origins in paganism. This channel has already documented that Mary is not the Queen of Heaven by turning to chapters like Jeremiah 7 and 44 to find that the only references to this alleged illustrious title is actually for a Babylonian goddess. We have also debunked the claims that Mary is the woman of Revelation 12, showing how this is in fact Israel. The inclusion of sun and moon iconography scattered throughout Catholic ceremonies, being in reference to Babylonian fertility worship, shows undeniably that we are looking at a system that follows in the footsteps of the pagans of the past. Revelation 17 verse 6 reads, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Undoubtedly, the Catholic Church is responsible for the death of a lot of people, and the numbers are quite shocking to say the least. Whether it's the genocides that took place in North and South America, the Crusades, the Inquisition, the persecution of Protestants, or even anyone being simply accused of heresy, Catholicism is stained with the blood of an innumerable list of martyrs. The fact that the Catholic Church had signed a concordat with Nazi Germany during World War II and helped Nazis escape from being brought to justice with Nuremberg just comes to show how the whore has aligned herself with the most unholy and godless organizations imaginable. What should also be addressed when it comes to this time was the Catholic Eustasi with Yugoslavia and their persecution of Greek Orthodox believers because they wouldn't convert to Romanism, with a reported 700,000 people killed by this militia alone. The word whore or whoredoms in the Bible is not just a reference to fornication or prostitution, but is even used in reference to heresies and turning away from God's spiritual doctrines. We can see this clearly demonstrated in Hosea 1 verse 2 where it reads, The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms, and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. In Revelation 17 verse 8, it reads, The beast that thou sawest, and is not, 
and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. The question is, why would there be a mystery to whose names are written in the book of life if it is obvious that the system is of Satan? It couldn't be too obvious and would require true biblical discernment to understand what this system is. In chapter 18 verse 6, it reads, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. The angel is calling out those who are entangled with this system, that truly wish to serve God, but are inside a system that has no part with the Lord. You cannot say at this point that this is not a religious system and that there wouldn't be people being deceived into believing they are followers of Christ when they are not. Finally, in chapter 18, verse 23, it says about the city that, For thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Interesting how Aleister Crowley, one of the most influential occultists of all time, said about the Catholic Mass in his book, Magic in Theory and Practice, that, one of the simplest and most complete of magic ceremonies is the Eucharist. It consists in taking common things, transmuting them into things divine, and consuming them. Another quote that comes from another Satanist and one of the founders of the Theosophical Society, H.P. Blavatsky, said about the Jesuits, a counter-reformation society that pursues the absolute dominance of Rome and the Pope, that the Jesuits have practiced not only occultism, but black magic in its worst form, more than any other body of men, and that to it they owe in large measure their power and influence. Would it be any surprise that the term hocus pocus actually comes from the Latin phrase hocus enum corpus meum? Even the name Vatican means in Latin center or the place of divination. It's not as though this interpretation is anything new, as the overwhelming majority of the most influential early Protestants saw the Vatican for what it really is. Now we are living in the last church age, and as 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The fact that there are hardly any Protestants actually protesting Rome is no surprise, as this time period is expressly characterized by false Christs, false prophets, and false believers. Where Jesus warned multiple times about the end of the world, saying, Take heed that no man deceive you. God has condemned the Vatican according to his word, and has called his people out of this godless and depraved system. There is no salvation within the Roman Catholic Church, and the Holy Ghost has called you out of her. Stop living in the lies and darkness of Romanism, which only leaves you ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, and come to know the light of the Holy Scriptures. 
which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus.